Afghans struggled to flee their country following the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan in August. Coming up, the challenges one refugee faced in obtaining an American visa. Plus, online dating rose in popularity during the pandemic, and the dangers of online dating rose with it. And later on Break It Down, we take a look at research into the polarization of one demographic group when it comes to social justice issues. Cronkite News starts now. Good evening and welcome to Cronkite News on Arizona PBS. I'm Diana Quintero. And I'm Shonda Paz. Thank you for joining us. An Afghan interpreter obtained a visa to come to the U.S. after waiting for a long time in his country. In a press conference today, he spoke about the process of getting a visa. Cronkite News reporter Peyton Muse tells us what his struggle was and how he was able to escape his country. Zabi is the name he is using for his protection. He was an interpreter for the U.S. military in Afghanistan and spent years trying to leave his country. A couple of weeks ago, Zabi arrived safely in Tucson. Immigration attorney Darius Amari aided in those efforts. He obtained a special visa after many attempts. Now Zabi is here and says it means so much to him. People in Afghanistan, they are living in the hell. Or they are living in a very, very bad place in the world. Ah, I feel proud and uh, I feel very, very safe. And it's looked like I have reached out to my dreams, you know. Zabi is still in the process of obtaining an immigrant visa, which will lead to a green card. According to his attorney, the process could take several months or even years. In the newsroom, Peyton Muse, Cronkite News. October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Tonight, Miss Out wants to bring the city together to discuss the effect that domestic violence has on the community. City prosecutor Stacy Good was a large part of the planning process for tonight's Domestic Violence Awareness Night. I know that victims of domestic violence want the community to know that this is a real thing, a thing that needs to be taken seriously uh, by the city and by our government and by our community. Um, and resources need to be available for victims of domestic violence and they need to be easily accessible. The event hopes to honor survivors and those lost to domestic violence. It will include speeches from city officials as well as domestic violence education from victim advocates. Online dating was more popular during COVID times because of stay at home restrictions, but that popularity brings more opportunities for scammers. Cronkite News reporter Alexa Glidick gives us tips on how to stay safe while online dating. I mean, online dating has been growing in popularity. Even prior to COVID, it's now the most common way to meet a romantic partner. According to a report from Stanford University, 39% of heterosexual couples meet online. But meeting online doesn't always mean it's safe. Liesel Shurabi, an assistant professor at ASU, gives some advice on how to stay safe while swiping. Uh, so I think a big one is Googling your date, making sure that you've checked to see if their picture is online attached to other names, making sure that they appear to be a real person. It's a good idea if they have public social media to check that out. Alex Franklin has tried online dating sites and one of his safety tips is to stay in contact with friends or family during the date. The first thing is, one of the things you can do is to tell somebody you're going, you know, friend, family, and set a time for you to like, call them or text them either during the date. Online dating is accessible. It's easy easier to meet a wider range of people. However, according to one report, Arizona is ranked high for being a dangerous state for online dating. Franklin thinks this may have to deal with Arizona's location. Phoenix is itself a higher crime rate city than some other cities. So However, Sherby says catfishing and dating scams happen everywhere, where there are steps you could take to prevent being taken advantage of. If you are suspecting something suspicious is happening, telling the dating site, reporting it to them so that other people don't fall into some kind of trap. If you know what you're doing and you verify who these people are and you don't rush things, it can actually be a really great experience. You can meet some really great people out there. In Phoenix, Alexa Glidick, Cronkite News. In order to determine which states had high levels of danger for online dating, studies looked at statistics like on cybercrime, romantic fraud rates, and violent crime stemming from online interactions. All this week, we're highlighting efforts to stop misinformation. It's all part of Media Literacy Week. Tonight, Amna Subhan shows us how misinformation can spread through bots. 
social media can often be a place where misinformation is spread and it can spread fast, like wildfire. In a matter of seconds, some of that spread is done by bots, programs that automatically do tasks. Bots can be designed to imitate real people automatically writing messages. If the programmers use lots of bots together, they can cause a post to trend or even go viral, pushing a specific agenda or spreading misinformation. So, how do you spot a bot? The Center for Analysis of Social Media in London offers this advice. One, check the profile. Is there a photo? Does the bio have spelling mistakes? Does the profile have followers? Two, check the posts. If there are lots of posts in a short time span, that's a sign the account could be automated. Three, check the subject areas. If the profile is continually talking about the same subject, using the same hashtags, it might be programmed to do that. To learn more about media literacy, go to cronkitenews.acpbs.org. One FDA advisory board endorsed Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 this afternoon. Coming up, we hear from pediatricians who are gearing up to vaccinate their young patients. For the PBS NewsHour. It has been a historic and traumatic week in Washington, D.C. Former reporter for the New York Times, political analyst for NBC, and multimedia journalist at USA Today. Join me this week and every week for a critical look at this week's top news stories. Yamish Alcindor, the new moderator of Washington Week. Friday nights at 7 on Arizona PBS. Passport is adding new shows and doubling the number of episodes for you to stream. For the first time ever, our most popular programs have been selected just for you. But there's so much more. Whether you like to travel. Wow. Feast. Mmm. And calories don't count. <laughs> look back. That is me. Discover. You know the whole story. There's something for everyone. Let's get to it right away. Stream on any device with Passport on the PBS Video app. Cronkite News is more than your local news station. Through our innovative ideas, we create new ways to connect with our viewers and have their stories be heard. Our cutting edge technology allows us to take a deeper dive into seeking the truth and delivering new perspectives. Stay up to date on top Arizona stories anytime on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook at Cronkite News. Today, an FDA subcommittee made an initial vote on the status of the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 through 11, choosing to endorse the vaccine. While not binding, the FDA's full recommendation is expected this week. Reporter Ballon Overstoltz McNair reached out to pediatricians' offices to learn how they're preparing. Several studies conducted show that the Pfizer vaccine is safe for the younger age group, and the FDA will soon make a final decision on the emergency authorization for the vaccine. Doctors' offices we talked to are gearing up for a busy few weeks of vaccinations. Parents who have been waiting to vaccinate their young children for COVID-19 will soon have the chance. When the vaccine was new, the priority was the elderly because we knew they would be most dramatically impacted. And over time, the um, availability of the vaccines increased. Pediatricians are already ordering doses of Pfizer ahead of the approval and reaching out to parents to schedule appointments. The process is ordering them through the state um, and we had to register as a vaccination site uh, with the state to get pre-approved, go through this little bit of training. Young children may not be high risk for severe illness, but they are a cause of concern because they can spread the COVID-19 virus to more vulnerable populations, especially in schools and around family members. Kids are spreaders of disease. They're in close contact. They forget to cover their mouth when they cough or sneeze. Uh, I think this is a population where the vaccine will make a really big difference in slowing the spread of this particular virus. Trials showed that the vaccine had a 90.7% efficacy rate with a dose one third of what adults receive. For pediatricians, vaccinating children is a part of regular work, 
Colborn says he isn't worried about the kids' reactions. It's why I like working in pediatrics. Uh, the kids, it seems like they, they can take a lot more than us adults can. And, uh, you know, where, you know, uh, this COVID vaccine may have affected me for 24 hours the next day, it might affect them for four. Over November 2nd and 3rd, the FDA will make that final vote on the use of vaccines and information on the vaccine for kids under five could be released soon with the approval likely coming next year. In the newsroom, Bowen Overstills McNair, Cronkite News. Enjoy the cooler mornings because it will be warming up throughout the week. Nick Shesky is in the Weather Center with details. Yeah, it was a pretty chilly morning this morning here in Phoenix. And if we look at our high temperatures all across the U.S. for tomorrow, it's going to be pretty chilly all up along the north here. 54 in Minneapolis, 55 in Seattle. Here in Arizona, it's kind of a different story. Our temperature, it's pretty good. Here in Phoenix, 79 degrees for um, tomorrow, 68 in Sedona. We're going to have some really nice temperatures as we're creeping into the last week of October here, getting ready for November. Now looking at our temperatures for tonight at our evening planner, it's going to cool down just a little bit tonight, but without that sun beating down you, that, that cool 67 in the daytime, that's pretty nice. But without that sun, it's going to feel pretty chilly tonight. So you might want to grab a jacket, might want to stay indoors for that one. Now looking at our eight day forecast for our next upcoming days, it's going to actually heat up a little bit. This chilliness that we had this morning, it's going away. It's going to get all the way to 90 come next Friday. But coming out of the weekend, the clouds are going to come back, start on Sunday and go into Tuesday. They're going to cool us down by about 10 degrees. Next Tuesday, it's going to be 80 degrees. So we're going to have some really clear and really comfortable temperatures coming after this weekend, after it heats up just a little bit. So in the Weather Center, Nick Shesky, Cronkite News. I'm Cam Dyer. Coming up after the break, I'll have your Cronkite Sports Report. What an undefeated high school football team located here in the Valley credits as their motivation to win their second straight title. Here we go, lights up. Whoa. As artists, we conduct our educations in public. You can never know whether it's going to be a success. One just has to risk it. It's you and the work and the place. It's a very particular relationship. Here's our lens. Tell us what you think. Friday night at 9 on Arizona PBS. What you get from Washington Week that you will not get anywhere else are the best and the brightest reporters from different media companies, and they're able to have a real conversation about things that are happening in Washington and around the country. But it's also a show about issues that are relevant to different communities. How do you think that as the moderator, I feel this deep responsibility to bring in those other perspectives so that people understand how power and politics impact their daily lives. Friday nights at 7 on Arizona PBS. Your favorite member benefit is getting better and bigger. This is wonderful. Over the next year, Passport is adding new shows and doubling the number of episodes for you to stream. They give us all that they've got. From your favorite cooking and travel series. Even the stairs are breathtaking. To history specials and award-winning documentaries. Better and bigger. That really is the fun part. Stream on any device with Passport on the PBS Video app. Cronkite News is more than your local news station. Through our innovative ideas, we create new ways to connect with our viewers and have their stories be heard. Our cutting edge technology allows us to take a deeper dive into seeking the truth and delivering new perspectives. Stay up to date on top Arizona stories anytime on TikTok, Twitter, and Facebook at Cronkite News. Welcome back. I'm Cam Dyer with your Cronkite Sports Report. The Coyotes are still looking for their first win after they fell last night to the undefeated Florida Panthers. The record is currently 0-5-1. The Yotes were down 4-1 midway through the third period and fought back to cut the deficit to just one, but it was too little too late. In spite of starting goaltender Carter Hutton leaving with a lower body injury and the loss, O'Brien, who got his first goal as a Coyote, remains optimistic about the team's future. Obviously, Hutz was great. Uh, veggie, you know, when Hutz got hurt, Veggie came in and he, did, he was spectacular too. So we had really good goaltending. You know, we want to win games. We had a really good group of guys in there, um, hardworking group of guys, guys with a lot of character, um, and uh, it's going to come. Kyler Murray is a big reason the Cardinals are off to a 7-0 start. 
leading them to another dominant win over the Texans. The team faces one of the best QBs in the league on Thursday night when they host Aaron Rodgers and the Packers. Turn on the tape and watch the throws he's able to make and um, just the way he orchestrates that offense, getting him into the right plays, getting him into the right checks. Um, even when you have it covered, his off-schedule stuff is as good as anybody that's ever played. And So, yeah, it's, it's uh, some sleepless nights when you're watching that film. The 7-0 Cactus High School football team in Glendale seems destined for the open division playoff. But as Cronkite news reporter Evan Osherwitz shows us, there is more to the Cobra's impressive run than a simple desire to win. Glendale Cactus is one of the best teams in 4A, but the Cobras are playing for more than just preserving their undefeated record. JV linebacker Jacob Duran suffered a brain bleed in a game against Sunrise Mountain, and the team is looking to honor him with a second straight section title. At the end of the game, he just started to like get really like dizzy and the, he got the ambulance called and then come to find out uh, he had like brain damage. At the end of the day, we're a family, so we just want to make sure that everyone's safe and healthy and happy. And when there's nothing you can do, can do to control that, and it was just kind of a freak thing that, you know, it just it, it tears you up. It's, it's, hard, it's hard to deal with. Duran is now out of the hospital, but his teammates continue to provide assistance to his grandmother and six siblings while he recovers from his injury. We made like a link for him, uh, donate money, donate food. Uh, the grandma was giving us updates throughout the whole thing. We made him posters. We took videos after our game for him. We did all that. Duran's long road to recovery is just beginning, but his teammates and coaches will be with him at every step. We generally care about him, but we also have a job to do on the football field. But just that bringing the jersey out and we talk about it, just know that we, we, we're always thinking about him and caring about him um, and that we're trying to show out for him every Friday night. In Glendale, Evan Osherwitz, Cronkite News. And that's a wrap on today's Cronkite Sports Report. Back to you, Sean and Diana. That's it for Cronkite News tonight. Thank you for joining us. For top Arizona stories anytime, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org.